very much. Um, you may notice the reskinning. I now have my trustworthy systems hat on. And um, I've been told I have to stay at the lecture in which I hate, I like to roam. Anyway, so this is about Lions OS, our new OS which we first talked about last year. We now have an official logo, as you can see here. And um, it's become, it's from being vaporware a year ago to the first release, point one release half a year ago at the Everything Open Conference. It's now started to look like a real operating system and um, you'll hear more about that when um, Ivan goes into more details. So the main question, so this talk is basically a, a bit of an overview that sets the scene for a number of trustworthy systems talks coming after. But sort of starting off, my main question is, uh, I want to answer is, why do we write a new operating systems? And um, where, where, is, where is the fun in that? Uh, sounds like engineering sort of thing. So we all agree, we've heard that several times before today, that SEO4 is just the most solid foundation for any uh, trustworthy systems work. It's unrivaled in its assurance and the power in terms of what the performance it gives you, the generality, etc. But as we found out, good designs on SEO4 are extremely hard. And so the, the encouraging thing here is I counted, and just after 50% of the attendees are trustworthy systems, present or past trustworthy systems people. Um, which in a way is no accident because the skills you need for building something on SEO4 are pretty rare outside the trustworthy systems and alumni community. It's just bloody hard and much harder than we expected it to be initially. And to my great embarrassment, I also have to admit that we contributed to that. There were a number of bad designs that came out of our group and made it out in the real world. And the problem is when we put something out, people start copying it, etc. And so, with a great level of pain, I have to admit that there's been quite a few train wrecks and I assume some of them have been quite expensive. Um, people building, trying to build something on SEO4 without having the deep knowledge that's required. So, my takeaway from this one, which I arrived at about three or four years ago, is the SEO4 community needs an operating system. And it's not just any operating system, it's an operating system that's well designed. Um, so people can actually copy the approaches we provide there. It's easy to use, so you don't need the deep expertise. And of course, it's open source that allows you to really expand on it and learn from it, etc. And obviously, I'm a university professor. I don't get paid for doing engineering projects. I am paid for doing research. And the cool thing I discovered only about two years ago is there's exciting research in this. And that, that's what we're doing at, at the moment. And I'm actually, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually having a ball because I'm doing, I think, really cool shit. So this is what Lions OS is. It's basically stopping the train wrecks. So if we build a new operating system, this time on SEO4, the usual thing people do is reinvent Unix usually badly. And this is almost all, there's a few notable exceptions, but almost all operating systems built on SEO4 are reinventing Unix. And that's just the wrong approach. So with Lions OS, we're taking a step back and re rethinking operating systems design. And this is one of the aspects where research comes in. This will produce some really cool publications just on the way we design and implement the system. And so we set us ourselves a number of fairly ambitious aims. There are three core aims for Alliance OS. The first one, this is sort of addressing the main points I mentioned before, practical, easy to use, open source OS. And we want to pretty much cover the embedded system space, but not beyond. And that's aim number one. So fairly general for embedded cyber physical IoT, but definitely targeting that domain and not more. Second one, best performing microkernel based OS ever. This is actually a low bar. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen benchmarks in papers that got rejected, some papers that got accepted, some 
commercial evaluations, etc. And they all tell me that all the other systems I mentioned on the previous page are at least a factor of 10 slower than what we can do with um, in lines OS. And the four, third one, of course, it's secure, and I really want it to be the most secure operating system ever. So from these aims, we can draw, draw some immediate conclusions on what we need to do. First one is a, in a way, a negative one, if you like. The, by restricting ourselves to the embedded space, we can get away with a static architecture. So that's not a static system, but a statically architected system. And everything I've seen, and I talk to a lot of people, everything I've seen in the embedded cyber-physical IoT space maps onto that. People are building more general things. No one has given me a convincing use case that requires a general <laughs> dynamic system in this cyber-physical space. And I see some massive nodding here. Last week, I visited Skycraft um, satellite company in uh, Canberra, and when I mentioned radical simplicity, it was a laugh-in. <laughs> and this is part of it. So the second one is performance, and this is basic. This, this is where, the, from the system's point of view, the fun starts. This is where the really good design is required, and um, this is where we need to apply what we learned in the past 20 years, really. And then the third one, of course, means it needs to be verified. Goes without saying, this is our tradition. And so these are the, the aims. And in order to address that, we have one core principle. And this is the time-honored engineering principle of keep it simple, stupid. Anyone who doesn't really follow that rule is not serious about building a performance secure system for the embedded space. So what does that mean? This is what I summarize as radical simplicity. We have verifying grain modularity. Of course, that's what, you, what we teach first year students and never observe, particularly in the operating system space, with very strict separation of concern. This is very much core of the whole thing. Everything we design is based on separate concerns into separate modules. The second one is what you see in was we introduced with a micro kit um, last year. This is the event-driven programming model. Again, this is radically simplifies the implementation of the system, and we saw that with device drivers. Um, if you remember last year, Lucy talked about networking where she outperformed Linux with a driver that was 700 lines of code, whereas the Linux one was 4,000. Um, and that part of that is the event-driven program model. And then the third one is use-case-specific use policies. And this is, if you like, the biggest digression from the traditional way of building operating systems. Classical operating systems um, have these general use cases. They try to be universal in the sense one code base should adapt to all use cases. Um, so in our case, Having this very strict separation of concern and fine-grained modularity, this is really, it helps development. It makes writing code and debugging it so much easier and faster. But of course, it's the key to a verification because we have much simpler modules that we need to verify. Without that, I would never, without having learned that we can really build a performance very finely granular, modularized operating system, I would have never dared claiming that we'll verify it. This is really key. The event-driven programming <coughs> model supports it. And then the use case specific uh, policy again means everything, strict separation of concerns mean a policy is encapsulated in a single module. If the one you have doesn't work, you swap it out by a different one. So you, we achieve use case diversity by making it easy to replace those policies. But again, every policy implementation is just as simple as possible for the particular use case, and it doesn't do more than that. And so this is, these are the basic principles on which we build Lions OS. So it's pretty much everything POSIX isn't. And therefore, we're definitely not redoing POSIX. Of course, that doesn't stop us from doing what people, everyone you talk to says we need POSIX, and if you dig deeper, no one needs POSIX. No one needs fork. What people generally need is a or want 
is a POSIX-like I.O. interface, and there's no problem wrapping that around our design. If, you don't, if you're not interested in performance, you can use POSIX, fine. Um, POSIX is inherently an inefficient interface, um, so this is the trade-off you make. If, if that's fine, then it's good with you. Okay, so this is sort of what we started doing about a year ago, and we trialed it first with a device driver framework, and again, Lucy gave this talk last year where she talked about the device driver framework and um, its design and implementation, highly modular, so the, even the simplest networking example has um, six or eight different modules where packets get through, a packet that gets echoed back goes through about 12 context switches compared to um, two to Linux. And on top of the um, principles I've established at Buff, so fine-grained granularity, event-driven programming, um, use-case-specific policies, we have um, asynchronous zero-copy communication. So this is very deep ingrained into the device driver model and by extension the rest of Lions OS and location transparent modules. So f when you write a module, you don't have to care whether you are going to run on a single core or distributed cross cores. Someone who implements a module doesn't have to care about whether or know about whether the other modules it talks to run on the same core or a different one. It's totally location transparent. And as Lucy said, these are slightly updated graphs from what she showed last year, and I'm not going to go through my, any detail, but we basically outperform Linux by about a factor of two. And this is what Lions OS, that, as Lions OS then is. It's based on the microkit and the device driver framework, which is not surprising, because if you look at an OS like Linux, about 80% of the code base is I.O. So device drivers and I.O. services is pretty much the bulk of operating systems, and then we build stuff on top. And Ivan, in his talk, will provide details on that. And then the other thing, of course, is verification. As I said, we're setting out to verify the whole thing. So how is that going to work? We have a verified kernel, thank you very much, uh, which was verified with interactive theorem proving. And last year, we talked about verifying the microkit. And we had an initial verification of the microkit using SMT solver, so that's automatic provers, which is much less um, labor intensive. And this is what we now trialed with operating systems components. So we verified with the same approach some uh, test cases of device driver framework components. And I have a, a transparent, semi-transparent certificate here because it's really proof of concept at this stage. But it's told us that this, this approach will work for the bulk, the, pretty much all the critical components in Lions OS because they're of similar complexity. And Rob is going to talk more about that, plus he will talk, also talk about the time protection work which we're restarting. And then a lot of the complexity has been moved away by the model, but some is retained and shifted into the intercomponent communications. And as well, I'm getting ahead of myself, um, what we're also working on is making the verification job easier by having a more appropriate programming language with a verified compiler. And this is what Mickey will be talking about tomorrow. And then um, the, there's a lot of complexity and source of bugs for, in the communication protocols between the components. And Courtney will talk about the use of model checking for verifying those. So we have, in principle, proof of concepts for verification of all the bits and pieces, and obviously these are really start at just proof of concept and we need to scale them further, et cetera, to be able to do them for the full system. But we have a pretty good feeling that this is going to work. What we don't know yet, and I'm relying on my um, former methods experts, particularly Rob, who is always the most critical, and if he says, yes, this looks like we should be able to do it with a bit of research, um, is to pull this all together into an overall verification story of the whole operating system. So this is, at the moment, the, the hand wavy vaporware bit, um, and we're probably not going to seriously start on that for another year or so, but this is definitely the aim. And 
Um, also, Elwin will talk about um, a completely separate project, which is the, the general purpose OS. Um, and just in case you're wondering why Lyons OS, it's named after John Lyons, who was a professor at UNSW, known for the Lyons book that taught many people about operating systems. Last week, we had the John Lyons Distinguished Lecture, Hai Bo Chen from uh, Shanghai Chao Tung, and he put up the Lyons book he used to learn operating systems. This is uh, Ken Thompson. And that's it. Um, stay tuned for the other trustworthy systems talk. And um, as I always keep saying, our motto is security is no excuse for bad performance. Thank you very much. <laughs>